124 pre facelift car mono wiper. First of all, we're going to get the hood in the service position. I pull on this lever, and pushing that up, go over to the other side. Same thing here. Pull on that so that little pig's out of the way. Now you can push the hood up until it's vertical. Then we're going to move over to the molding here. And so the molding, there's basically two pieces. You got one here and one over here. On this one, they're clipped into a little clip on the body. Uh, only use your hands. I would never pry under here with anything that's going to break your windshield. So, get your fingers back behind here, under there, and just let, slowly pull. And what you'll see is it clips in right there on that little thing. So, that little silver thing is part of the body, and the molding has a little. So, the silver thing is a slot. And the molding has a so-called tab. The tab clicks into that slot. So go around and undo those very carefully. And I'll do that uh, and pause it for a second. So now that I have the molding off, you can see again how it goes. There's these little this guy. This thing, these are in the body. That one actually looks a little loose. I might have to screw that in or re-rivet it. But anyways, that's on the body permanently. And the molding itself just has this... It's not even a tab, per se. It's just a this ridge. You can actually see right here where that clip was. And it just basically just unsnaps. So put that aside. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. And I'll be right back. So as you can see, both both sides are off now. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take off this little gasket here and it just clips onto that the body and you just simply pull that off of there all the way around get that out of the way and you'll put that aside and then next we're going to go and work on these each of these screws there's one here one there and two on these chrome things, and same with the other side. So I'll take those off and be right back. Now notice when I took these two screws out, the two smaller kind of gold color ones were these first two in the plastic. And then the longer uh, silver color ones were the ones that went in the actual metal pieces here. So just label those or bag them or put them aside, whatever you need to do. Okay, so now that all these screws are out, two plastic ones here, two metal ones there, and over on that side too, right there, we're now going to start to pull out this drain. One very, very important note when you go to put this back together. This drain has a little spout that goes into this tube. Remember to put that spout down into this tube when you put these drains back in, or you'll start putting water down in the body down there and you'll get rust so very very important on that one make sure you do that so I'm gonna remove that and I'll be right back just start kind of just pulling out on this a little bit at a time so no before we start pulling the stuff off of here there's this little white thing you'll take this and pull this out towards you and that'll un you put that aside and that'll unlock this piece. You can see there's a seam right here. And then we start working on the other side, doing the same thing. So, as you can see, once I've pulled this white tab out, it looks like that. I actually did use pliers, but I did it very, very gently without snapping it up and snapping it down. I just pulled straight out, easy like. Now it allows you to start pulling up on this trim. Same thing over here. Remember to get the drain and you install this. 
line back up with that tube. And I'll start to pull up on this and get this out of here and I'll be right back. <clears throat> a quick note on mine when this came out, it also brought this piece with it. This piece right here is simply meant to go down as a secondary cover for water for across here. So if you follow just that piece, it's kind of pretty much go down in there, in there like that. And you notice there's a little thing here and thing here. It's because they had that plastic riveted on to the uh, this piece. But as you can tell when I removed it, the little rivet things popped out of those holes. So I'll probably just glue it uh, back on. Or when I put this back together, I'll just place, place this in here. Place this part in here. And on this side, you notice this doesn't have the little extra uh, curved plastic piece to cover anything because over here there's no uh, electrical so it doesn't need to so this is different and notice that little notch right there the square notch corresponds with the square notch in the end of this thing so it kind of goes like see the little square notch on there it goes boop like that and then the white clip slides in in there so now that's off put that aside on some earlier models, there are two screws somewhere right either here or along here somewhere that this one doesn't have. Other models also have, instead of these screws around here like mine does, they have just a, a plastic cover thing that pulls off. So here's a picture online of one of those. It looks like, it's kind of hard, it's my glare, sorry, <laughs> but it looks like this little plastic thing. So on this one we're gonna back off these screws to take that off around there. Now that I have all five of these screws off of here, I'm gonna simply just take this ring and lift it out of here. Notice it goes under this little black tab right there so you just kinda be careful when you slide it out on both sides like that. Put that aside. So now that that trim piece is in the way you start to pull up on this you start thinking to yourself, God, what, what else is keeping it here? And if you notice, this is one piece all the way up to here. If you look really carefully, there's a little, uh, where is it, right there, that little black pig. If I can focus, the little black pig right there fits into the, uh, my, my car is blue, in the, into that blue body. So you gotta get behind here and depress that tab to get this part to click off of there. And I've done that by also, again, removing the second uh, piece of weather stripping. So I'll take that and I'll remove that all off of there, off the car, and set it aside and work on getting this at least out right here. And I also believe that we may have to unscrew this knob and unscrew This little guy has got two holes on it. You could probably start it with needle nose, put one end of the needle nose in one hole, one in the other, and twist. There's also one there, and one over here. So I'm thinking this panel comes off as part of this. So now that I've clicked the little tab out of that blue body hole and up and out. And same on the other side, you go to move this and it's got some walk to it and you're like, well, now what is it hung up on? Well, it's hung up on this thing right here. That little clip holds this piece to this piece. So you need to undo this clip, don't lose that one. <laughs> and uh, that'll allow this little piece for, to move that way. As you can as you can see, I've worked this and swiveled this up with a little screwdriver. You can see that that little sharp point right there is what digs into the plastic. So I'm just lifting up on that. I wouldn't go cranking on this thing because this will go ping up in the air and you'll never find it again. So use one hand on this side, 
your other hand on this clip and sit there and just work that clip off of there. So now you can see that this part is free. And I'll go do the same on the other side. Now that I have this side loose, I've gotten this side, that clip off of there, loose. And this little thing out of that, that pig out of that hole, you can see that this starts to lift off. Now notice my clip is still on the end of that, so be careful you don't lose it. Don't get too crazy when you lift this out of here. And you should see that it should come up. Get my wire out of the way here. Come out, up and out. And put this aside. So now as you can see, with that piece now removed, we have all sorts of movement, but it's still hung up on this little firewall little piece. That's why we're going to go in here and remove this knob and this end one right here and that one and that one. And then I'll get this whole thing to free up. So now that we have this black knob, that one, this one, which I didn't need needle nose to put in those two holes, I just undid by hand. Now that I got this whole thing loose, if you look down in there, there's a screw right there, and one right there. Undo those two. So now that those two screws down there are undone, you can lift this piece up and out. So, to summarize, we basically <laughs> took the windshield molding off by these two clips on both sides. Then, we did these screws here, here, and here to get that rail out of there. Again, same with the both sides. Then we undid this white clip as well to aid in that. We undid these five screws don't lose these little little guys either to take that trim off we went in here and undid this other gasket and we released all these knobs to get this little thing to pull away we released the two screws down in there uh, what else did we do we got this uh, other piece here to remove with the tab um, pulling off of there and now we're to the point where this will come off. It's kind of a pain, but well, that's what you get. So now you can see that the uh, wiper motor and everything is starting to be exposed. Now, before you start ripping this off of here, there are these two little rubber diaphragms that are drains that also go into there. So I would study these as you bring this out of here and hold on to, in other words, get your hand down here and hold on to what you need to hold on to while you remove this big piece with the other hand, just to make sure you don't tear anything off. These actually look pretty good. I've seen ones where this is all, this triangle shaped one is just completely ripped or dried out. You don't want to rip it, so ease it out of there, this whole piece and make sure that these stay intact, just like that. Don't go twisting, don't go pulling crazy. So now, you also have access to the blower motor if you so chose to do that project, which, oh god, I don't want to do that now. Um, and we'll get on to how to remove this wiper out of here. So, now that this piece is out of here, this is a good opportunity to look at this foam right here. There's this little foam strip that goes around, and see how there's a piece missing? And it goes around, and there's a piece missing, and it's hanging off there. You can go and get some new foam at a hardware store. And I reapply that to that piece because see how the other half came off? That just kind of separates that shroud from water going down in this area. And I live in Oregon and water is like everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the weather stripping here. I'll probably stick it to this thing first all along here and then put that back in place. So we're going to get out these bolts here now. So to get so get to get the wiper motor out, there's 10 millimeter bolts, four of them. One, two, 
You lift this up a little bit. There. Right there. Three. And you go to the other side, same thing. You lift this up a little bit. There's that fourth one. Right there. Ignore these two for now. These only hold the motor to the linkage. They don't hold the assembly to the car. So I'll undo those four. On this one under here, when, you, when you're backing that one right there off, I recommend having a, a rag or a magnetic tool or something on standby. Because if you drop that and it goes down in there, then you're into some fun. Then you're into undoing these clips and doing that star and getting this whole shroud off of here to go dig it out later. Don't do that unless you're wanting to work on your blower motor and you don't care anyways, but when you take this one off under here on the, and on the other side, don't drop it. So now I have these four out. What I basically did was I had my right hand cupped under here, covering that entire opening while I had started it with a ratchet and then I reached in with my other hand and uh, undid the nut by hand just so it wouldn't fall out of the socket and down in that abyss. I don't want to do that. I've done that too many times in my life. And then the same thing with the other side, just kind of so it doesn't fall down in this hole. <laughs> I cut my hand under it and where I undid the nut where my thumb is up under here with the other hand. And I can capture it and put it aside. So now that those are done and those, those nuts are set aside, there's this one little remaining thing, it's this little clip. Sometimes this clip is missing if people have been in here before or they lost it or whatever. Basically you just take the whole assembly and you can actually just push down on it and see how that just slipped right off of there. Um, just like that. And you can easily, uh, or I should say carefully, Start lifting this motor out of here with two hands, making sure it's not caught in anything. Don't hurt your windshield. One thing I forgot about, one thing I forgot about while I'm trying to lift this out here is that the wiper arm is hitting up under the, the lip of the hood there. And I don't want to get into a weird contortionist thing, so we're gonna go over how to take that arm off so that this motor can come out and swing freely. I mean, I'm sure you could lift up here and push the whole assembly to the right and wiggle out, but then the motor is kind of in this real confined space, so we're going to go over how to do this. This is basically a plastic cover, and you lift uh, towards, this, towards the center of this, not towards the outside, but towards the center of this, lift up under here on both sides, like thumb and index, or thumb and middle kind of thing. And what it does is it comes... comes up. So now that you're in this place where it's up, don't keep cranking up like that. You'll break these tabs off. What you do is once that's from the center part has, has come up, now you lift it towards the center of the assembly. In this case, it's kind of toward me. So you notice I kind of go up and out. And that's why, because these kind of go back in like that. It's like a boop kind of down and in and snap. So you want to lift up. Don't keep cranking up on it that hard. Just kind of pull it towards you. And then you can start swiveling it up while you're pulling it towards you. And that's how you get that off there without breaking that off. Now we need to take off this little X nut. So it's a number five. You can use a Allen key or Allen extension or I have a shorter, I have actually shorter ones of these. That's the Allen on the end of the chrome part here but this is the one I had available and just start undoing that one so again this is my videos aren't perfect and this is where there's an example when I went to go pull this out of here but it kept hitting up on this lid because of the arm I was like well I'll just undo this hex nut and go and lift this thing off well this thing is giving me a little bit of resistance uh, that silver wasn't showing before which means I'm I'm pulling on it it's moving the thing is when you pull on this assembly, while this is not bolted down anymore, you don't have a lot of resistance. So I have to put a left hand here and a right hand here to pull this off. Um, 
I want to be able to really crank on that. So maybe what we should do is do this thing as the very first step at the beginning of this video. They do have a way to turn on the uh, wiper switch. And when this motor is pointing straight up in the middle of the windshield, they unplug the battery real quick. So the, so the motor is stuck in that position. Then they undo the nut. Then while this is tightened down, they have resistance and they can pull this off of here. What I am simply just gonna do in my case, since I kind of screwed that up, is I'm going to, I just took off the wiper arm or the wiper blade, which makes this thing a lot shorter, which means I can still, now I can pivot the motor out of here. Um, or the whole assembly, I should say, out of here. Now that that is no longer has a wiper blade to hit up under here now. Now it can be free, and then I can get on the bench and pull this off here. So that's probably the way I would do it next time, is get this thing off first. Uh, so the bolted down status is making this have resistance to at least get this off of here, then go and do all the other steps mentioned in the video. But now I'm gonna use two hands here and get this motor out of here. When you start lifting this up and out, there's a connector on the back there that you got to get off of there so don't go pulling on this really hard and getting carried away with it undo that connector on the way out very gently and don't let your motor hit the windshield <laughs> so there you go now that that wiper arm is off of there this won't hit the hood anymore i was actually able to move it to the right towards the driver over there like that and then disconnect the, the wire and it's up and out Looks pretty nasty. Now we're gonna go work on this on the bench. I guess this could also be a also be a good time to uh, check for any rust down in here. Put some anti-rust stuff here. Wipe out dirt. Any huge obvious leaves and dirt around here. I just don't want a dirt smell coming in the cabin from this area. So it's good to kind of just get this cleaned up, you know. And if you're really retentive which I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna do this or not here but uh, see how this foam's all cracked this is the flapper the fresh air flapper um, as you can see I can kind of open and close it that foam's all cracked if you're really going after it you could peel this off scrape it off cut some to shape which would be another chore without it being removed from there and then um, you know do the whole thing that's really just for I think insulation really this, uh, this thing as it opens up all the way. I don't want to pull on the vacuum pods too much. Yeah, they're giving them resistance, which means the pods work great. But anyways, I think when this comes all the way up to the top, that, that pad kind of helps it. So I may just replace some of that. I may not. It just depends on how I feel as I do the project. So we'll see what happens. So now that we have the uh, assembly off the car, I'm going to go ahead and separate this by grabbing up here and pulling this up and you may have to rock it and wiggle it back and forth as you can see as I pulled this straight off of here I had to kind of wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it and get it to come out and we're going to grease inside this little hole right there and this pin once we have this disassembled you'll see what I'm getting at later So before we uh, disassemble this thing, we need to make a couple marks on here so we know where it last left off. Um, you can see I made some red marks on that arm as well as the housing over here. Reason being, uh, and this is a different wiper motor, so this is just for example. Once you get this nut off of here, and you look under here, it's actually a knurled uh, tooth assembly as it is inside of here. So you want to make extra sure that you made a mark on this plate as well as this body so that when you pull this off of here you can put it back on the exact same spot. I would also make marks and once you flip this once you flip this whole assembly over. Also make marks over 
here as well. I would mark a black or whatever color on that end of that stud, that spindle, as well as the arm here. Um, for our purpose, I'm not going to take off this nut. You only take this nut off when you're going to undo these three things and take the motor out and replace the motor itself. I'm not showing you how to do that today. That's how you would have done it. You would just undo these three things, undo this nut, make sure you have it in the right position, put the new motor in, put the nut back on, so on and so forth. But I'm just talking about just the lubrication of it today. But anyway, you would do the same thing. You'd make a little mark like I did and a mark on the spindle before you uh, proceed. So I'll do that back on mine. I got the marks here. And I did make these marks just for grins, just for the practice of it. Over here as well. On the spindle, even on the top arm and that bottom arm, just to make sure they go back in the right places. So now we're going to work on this nut here. It's a 17 millimeter. You may need to put this whole thing on a vise to hold it for you while you break this guy loose. We'll see how mine goes. I'll be right back. So to break that guy loose, I actually didn't use a vise. I basically just <laughs> I just basically just held this thing to my legs like that. I held the the motor end in my left hand. Then I just broke that off with my right hand and it, it broke loose. So next we'll see if this comes off or whether we need a puller. Also note on this there's a washer right there. So don't, don't lose that washer. So it goes nut, then washer in the housing. I'm gonna get this over and see if I can Use a puller to get this off. And just for my notes, it was nut and wash around the outside. As you can see in here, there's that little circlip we'll get to later. That's for my own purposes, so I remember. So the nut has been loosened and the washer has been put aside. Don't do what I do on this. This is the smallest puller that AutoZone has. It's like this big old honking guy, and it does work. But this little arm right here, I, I couldn't get it in between this bar and this housing. In other words, it was, I couldn't get it to hook under here because this and this were too close. So what I did was, by hand, I moved the motor. Uh, this was over here. I grabbed that and just swiveled this to here. The more this way you go with it, the more this thing rotates, which means the more gap here between these two appeared. So you wouldn't have to do that if you had a smaller puller, but my puller is gonna get right around there like that at three points. I'm gonna put the thing right there on the end of the stud and crank it. Sorry about the airplane. I got airplanes and trains and Planes, trains, automobiles, so it's a small town, but a lot, of, a lot of traffic, I guess. All right, so I got this obnoxious puller on here, and it worked. Whenever these pullers pop these off here, they come off, boom, like a real sudden kind of slip, and it makes you think that your, it makes you think that your puller, uh, in my case the black polar spindle it makes you think that it like as you're tightening the, the top thing that it that slipped off the spindle actually it didn't that slippy feel is the actual uh, casing of this there you go you remember you got your marks on it so you can go ahead and lift this off and just kind of pivot it to the side and now we have this little uh, area to deal with here I'll clean this up and be right back Got this little C clip. You can kind of see it right here. We're gonna remove that. Use your needle nose, use your flat blade, whatever however you do it. Don't let that thing fly out of here. And you notice I have a washer under it too. So keep note of the C clip, circ clip, and the washer. So I've gotten this so I've gotten this C clip off of here. I set it aside. And it looked like they had one big washer on here. But now that I take that off of there, I realize that there's actually two. 
a thick one on top and a thin one on bottom. So put those down in that same order as well for baggy or whatever you're going to do. Now I'm going to take this part off of here and I'm going to get to that. So now that we have all of these off of here, um, our instinct is to push down this spindle to remove it from the assembly. And you can pull on this black cover outwards that way all day and it'll never come off. The key and it's required, so do not do not hit that spindle with a hammer. Do not do anything of the sort. The key is to move the arm straight up because there's a little notch inside the gear that allows this to come off. So once you move this straight up, then this pulls straight out. And I'll do that with two hands. So as you can see, it's, it's more of the way out, so I'm going to grab the, the black thing here and then I'm going to, again, I need two hands, so I'm going to pull this straight on out now that it's in this position. So now that I have this turned, I'm able to lift it straight off. This is what the guts look like. As you can see, not a lot of grease on here. And I've already had this open, so I'm cheating, but um, I've already cleaned this out. This almost didn't look much different uh, when I had first pulled the cover off as opposed to after I cleaned it. So I got a toothbrush with Dawn and cleaned all those teeth out. And you can look for damage as well. It might have some marking, but I'm not going to replace this gear maybe next time. But it looks decent enough to, to put it back in for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to grease that up like crazy all in here all in here there's also a good opportunity on this o-ring in here uh, to re replace that as well note there's a washer here as well that sits down in there uh, and even maybe even a second one no it's just one so those, those just came out with that together so I'm just gonna leave them there but I may actually go to like an AutoZone and get a little O-ring kit because this O-ring, it feels a little brittle. Plus, as you can tell, it's not exactly round. It's kind of wavy and mutilated looking. So I may just actually go match that up and get another one of those uh, as well. But I'm glad I don't have to replace this gear just yet. They have them on eBay. I could steal it from the other assembly, but that's a whole other process. So, but at least right now, I'll use that. I guess they're using Silglide as a, uh, a lubricant in here, so I'll go and grease those up. And then we're going to move on to this and how to get this off so we can uh, grease inside of here as well. So to disassemble this part of it, there's three screws. Some, I think, have five. Mine only had three. I have one, two, and three like that. So I took those three screws out. Mine's in 1992, so maybe it's just slightly different. So I took those three screws out. These look like they're screws, but it's just just a fitting down there. There's nothing having to do with it. And I had a little trouble getting this apart, so what I did was very, very carefully I put a screwdriver in this little groove here and just twist it just a little bit and made my way around real easy like. So I wouldn't scratch it or bend it or something like that to get this off. And I'll show you how that looks. <clears throat> so this is how it looks once I pried the cover off. The reason I had to pry it, it felt kind of like it was going... <clears throat> is because there's this little rubber gasket along here. That was just sort of like, you know, petrified on. So I was able to pry that off. Now we're going to go in here and lub lubricate all this as well. We're going to do and clean this up along this inner edge because there's a wheel right here this wheel here is if it has like a groove in it that rolls along this rail right here up and down and I'm going to lubricate and clean up all the grease along this shaft right here and especially it goes down into here I'm going to clean that up as well and then uh, now that I can actually man 
manipulate this assembly, you can actually move it with your hand. Like that. You can kind of move this back and forth to get access to the different stuff. So I'm going to put oil down in between here, between this gold and the, the body down in there, and all the little, the one down in there as well. So take your time, clean this up, and uh, grease every little joint with like a, a general purpose non-evaporative oil. And then uh, I'll show you how that looks after it's all greased up. Oh cleaned out and this is clean and everything's clean. I got some uh, Sil Glide. Doesn't uh, melt, freeze, gum, and it's weatherproof. And I'm going to put that in here, all in here liberally, inside here. I'm going to put it on the front of the post here, all the way in here. These tracks, the little rollers, and you'll even notice that clearance between that gold plate and that bottom is just like a little washer. I'm going to put some under there as well, even though it te technically clears, but just to kind of get oil, or I should say grease, moving around in there. And I'll go and do that and be right back. So now that i got a bunch of grease on there, it's clear so you can't see it. I'm going to go and put it underneath that bar, and between the wheel and that gold bar on both sides. Basically any of these uh, these joints in here that you see. Even the little joint down there, etc, etc. One down in there. So just kind of use that uh, general purpose oil. Then I'll put some here too. So as you can see I got it on the, the gear here and I even put it between the shim washer and that o-ring as well and uh all on the inside here so we will move on to start to put this thing together here i'm gonna gonna start putting some uh oil inside of uh all these little guys as well every little joint that you see This is the, the motor, even on this section of the motor, this is little like, looks like a little ball joint with a cup, so I just kind of lift up with that. I'm going to put the grease in there as well. I even ended up putting some of the sill glide on this rubber shim here because they get dry, as well as the exterior of the boot. They're kind of meant for, uh, it says, uh, trunk seals and weather stripping too to keep them soft, so that'll help keep the engine heat away. I may open this just to see what the grease is like in here. You just undo those three stars and uh, peek under there. I'll see what that looks like if there's needing to be greased or not. On, the in, on, this, on this particular here, I'm going to put a silk line on this gasket as well to keep it uh, from drying out. I'll just put this around the outer edge and then I'll Put that that uh, clamshell they call it back on, and then um, install the unit back in. Okay, so I put the cover back on, and now again these three screws go back into here, here, and there, and then we're going to take the whole unit. And remember, it's got to be 90 degrees perpendicular to the unit that spindle in there and press it down and in. We'll do that in a second. So now back to this we have like we were mentioning before we have a thin washer first. Actually there's two thin washers. They were stuck together from crud so I cleaned them up and I'm gonna put sill glide in between them as well. So there's two skinny washers then the thick washer, then the circlip. That's the order in which they go onto this spindle. So I'll go ahead and grease those up and put that on in that order. <clears throat> so now that I have the two skinny ones back on and this thick one back on, I'm going to put the circlip back on, which 
is a frightening experience. And you can see the the groove down in there, so I'm going to do that with two hands so I don't lose it. Be right back. So now you can see the little circlip is back down in the groove. Now it's time to put this onto there. So again, we got the red mark that I put on the end here. I line that up with my red mark, and then I'm going to add the. Once I add that on, I'm going to add the washer and the nut on top after I do that. Get this lined up. I'm lining up my mark. That's my mark here. And I'm also making sure that my marks over here also line up. So in other words, you can uh, pull on this gold bar up and push on the gold bar down to rotate this assembly to get these marks to line up in any way you need to in order to get these light marks to line up also. So I have all four marks lined up and then I'm going to put that washer on and that nut right here. So I got the nut back on. Decided to undo these stars just to see what the grease and the motor look like. And as you kind of, there's five of them. Two here and three around. When I go to peel this back, it eh, looks okay. But when you go to kind of mess with it, you notice it's real, it's more of a feel. It's, it's like too sticky and it's too gummy, especially right here. It's like kind of like big globs and stuff. So I'm going to um, clean it up a little bit and get a, a, a better set of grease in there and see what we got.